On Motor Week this week, the joys of a true multi-purpose vehicle, BMW's new airbag technology, and the Daihatsu Virtual Showroom. But first, Mike Rutherford, no doubt somewhere exotic. Well, I get a lot of stick on this program because I'm always being accused of uh, swanning off to exotic places and uh, having a fabulous time. So we thought we'd do something a bit closer to home this week. And uh, believe it or not, this is quite close to my home, a few miles away. Um, we're in good old central London. Yeah, you might see this dirty, grubby image of a London that consists of traffic fumes and homelessness and grubby buildings, but in fact, we're in the heart of the West End here. We're in Regent's Park. And for me, along with Greenwich Park, this is one of not only the greatest places in London, but one of the greatest places on Earth. But the reason that London is so green is that there were so many horse and carts around in London. So many people were traveling by the, by the good old faithful horse in the old days, that there was an awful lot of um, waste from those horses. And it was all shoveled up into little corners. And from that, we had these beautifully fertilized, if you like, open areas that became the parks. That's a great and quaint little story from the past. But on a more serious note, in fact, you're probably asking by now, well, why don't we return to those days? Because if more horses mean more fertilization and more parks, that has to be a good thing in the city center. Only one problem. If we relied on horses in London today, Instead of motor cars, we'd be 40 feet deep in manure. So let's just get it into context. And before we complain about the good old motor car polluting the atmosphere, let's think of the pollution and the mayhem that would be caused if we're all relying on, on the humble horse and we're all traveling by horseback. But let's get back to cars because we're in London for the launch of this car, the new Jag. There's something so quintessentially British about it. It could only be a British car. There's no way in the world you'd climb into this and suspect for a minute that it was a German car or God forbid a Japanese car. This is 100% British with a tinge of Detroit, like I said earlier, thanks to the fact that Ford owned Jaguar. Like I said, it's got the V8 engine from the XK8. There were very few complaints about that engine when it was unleashed in the XK8 Sports Convertible and Coupe, or oh, about a year ago now. And there will be very few complaints about that engine, that 32 valve, all alloy engine in this car. I mean, I'm having difficulty actually thinking of another car right now that I would rather be driving. If I was, I mean, this man is a danger. He's pulled over without a signal. Now he's pulled out and he's trying to do the same to the guy behind. And he's got a pile of junk and we've got one of the best cars in the world. And we've got more to lose than him. People like that really annoy me. Not that I suffer from road rage, but I want to go back and nut him. Sorry, no, ignore that bit. Um, let, me, let me continue. This car is the sort of car, if I was told, sorry, there's a crisis on the other side of Europe, the other side of Britain, and you've got to get there quickly, safely and in a relaxed kind of frame of mind not that that's easy when there are idiots like that on the road i can't think of a better car in the world to do that job in from the redesigned one piece dashboard to the instruments themselves to the switch gear to the radio controls the air conditioning obviously and the uh, gear stick here we're in the automatic version and although it's got a sports feel to it, this car, and it is effectively a sports saloon, um, I'm quite happy to plonk this gear shift into drive mode. Ignore the sports button here, which gives you a slightly different setting for more sports-like driving, and just cruise. It's the sort of car that you're quite happy to cruise around in. The exterior is not as dramatically different as I, I thought it might be. Jaguar or Ford, it pays your money, it takes your choice. Jaguar insists that about 30% of the exterior is changed. 
30% of the panels are changed in one way or another. And uh, I couldn't point out many things on this car that look radically different from the car before. So it's very much an evolutionary development from the previous model rather than a radically different design. And of course that's no bad thing if you're an existing Jaguar owner. A new type of airbag to protect the head inside impacts has been developed by BMW to complement the standard and front door side airbags. The inflatable tubular structure or ITS system is housed beneath the headlining running from the A-pillar to the rear on both sides of the car. When activated it quadruples in diameter and shortens into a long sausage shaped cushion to protect an occupant's head in a side collision. BMW's own research into real-life accidents reveals that side collisions account for 21% of accidents, yet are responsible for 36% of all cases of bodily injury. A majority of these cases show that occupants suffered head injuries received either from contact with the car interior, objects penetrating from outside, or from hyperflexion, a rapid head and neck acceleration which can lead to paralysis. The ITS activation is less aggressive than normal airbags and gives a relatively gentle inflation to its 12-litre volume and remains inflated for several seconds in order to keep up protection during any potential rollover situation. The ITS has just been made available for the BMW 5 and 7 series. Do you remember the MPV special we did some months back? And a certain Mr Rutherford who was adamant that MPVs were not multi-purpose vehicles but instead... They're not MPVs or multi-purpose vehicles. They're mini-buses. Oh, what was that again, Mike? They're mini-buses. Yeah, right. But, Mike, just to be awkward, and you know I'm good at that, I have to tell you that there are stacks of people out there who don't give a monkeys that their vehicle looks like this or handles like a van, because all they want is something practical. Of course, great strides have been made by manufacturers in creating from scratch big, multi-seated vehicles that drive like cars. But at the end of the day, although you can fit seven or eight people into the standard wheelbase MPVs, you can't really fit in all their luggage as well. And you certainly couldn't sleep comfortably in any of them. Enter the Volkswagen Multivan. OK, so it may look an awful lot like the Caravelle, which of course has been around forever. But it looks like it because basically this is what it is. The breakthrough has come with the designers actually sitting down and thinking about how they can use the interior to make this a real multi-purpose vehicle. OK, so there's only one door, which is a slight drawback, I must admit. But that's because on the other side is this fantastic pop-up table. Perfect for doing work on on those long journeys or for kids to play games on, which they can then store in one of the great number of cubby homes. When you're parked up, you can even pop a TV set on here for a bit of light relaxation and then plug it into one of the sockets down there. And up here is a fluorescent strip light, which is handy for getting changed by at night when it's dark. Because yes, this is a bedroom as well. Open the huge but surprisingly not too heavy tailgate and you find a mattress. Now that's the first part. And now it's off with the headrest. One, two, and three. Two simple catches to release the back seat. And the final piece of the jigsaw is the handle down here. It needs a good firm pull. And there you have the perfect double bed. Oh! Oh yeah, forgot about this bit. The nice men at Volkswagen provide you with curtains to protect your modesty. The Volkswagen Multivan seems to me to be just perfect for the family that likes to get out and about at the weekend, maybe indulge in a spot of camping. So I lent the Multivan to my boss to see how he and the family got on with its various configurations.
nice, what great fun clearing the bed away and popping up the breakfast table. Maybe lovely for the family, but what about the poor driver at this end? Well, although it's a bit of a struggle to actually get up here, once you make it, the seats are fantastically comfortable and there's a wonderful commanding view of everything around you. The switch gear is all very sensibly laid out and easy to find. And although the steering wheel isn't adjustable, I've got to say that everybody who's driven this vehicle, whether they be six foot tall or five foot four like me, seems to have found that it suited them just right. Now the other huge MPV in this sector is the Mercedes V-Class and both that and the Multivan are priced at around £22,000. However, what you don't get with the Mercedes is a whole host of extras that come as standards on the Multivan, including a radio cassette, electric front windows and electric mirrors. And what about the dual aircon system, which is absolutely fantastic? Cold in the front, warm in the back, or maybe the other way around. Here you have automatic climate control split between the front and the rear. It's when you turn the key and get the multivan moving that things start to get a little bit disappointing. There's an awful lot of engine noise, but then again, we're not exactly expecting it to be as quiet as a Citroen Synergy or handle like a Ford Galaxy, are we? But don't let the fact that essentially you're driving a van put you off. Once you're behind the wheel and you're up and running, it's actually not as difficult as you would think and you do get used to it extremely quickly. You may feel a bit like a truck driver from time to time and the noise from the diesel power plant isn't that well insulated. But at least this isn't as gas guzzling as many of the petrol MPVs I know. Now if you're in the market for something like this, you really do have to weigh up all the pros and the cons extremely carefully. This would be a great vehicle for the family, for weekends away. But not so good if you also want it to double up for business journeys or for daily commuting. The Caravelle, on which this new multivan is based, is a solid, reliable performer and was voted by Diesel Car Magazine to be the king of MPVs. The multivan builds on these strengths to improve the practicality for folk who want to use it as more than just a minibus. But all I know is that it's just fantastic to be able to lounge around inside a vehicle with a cuppa and with the TV on, nice and warm, while the crew set up the next shot. Cheers, VW. When it's time to buy a new car, are you put off by the hassle of trudging around the dealerships and making appointments for test drives? This is Sarah Clothier. She's interested in a new Daihatsu move, but instead of her going to the showroom, the showroom is going to her. Hello, good morning. You're through to the City Daihatsu line. Ian speaking. How can I help you? Oh, hi, yes. Can I speak to somebody about a test drive on a Move Plus, please? Details taken. Sarah's requested car comes round for a test drive. Hi, Sarah. Hi, hello. Hi, it's Davo from City Daihatsu. Great. Oh, great. We're going to take, take your little daughter, yeah. right? What's your name? Lucy. Lucy. All right, Lucy, we're going to go out for a drive. Okay. Come on, then. Let's go. Since Sarah knows the kind of car she wants to buy anyway, she doesn't want to waste her time going round showrooms. It's quite intimidating, I feel, going into a large garage. Um, it just seems to be overall so much easier, a lot quicker. And what, what about um, the other... But isn't this just a method to get high-pressure sales techniques into people's homes? We don't want to pressurise anybody into buying a car, because ultimately, you know, people know their own minds, they're not going to buy something they don't want. Daihatsu car sales doubled in the last year. However, the company is still only a small player in the UK car market. Is this new idea of getting a test drive by phone, a virtual showroom, the way forward? We're not a household name, nor in the future would we, we would like to be on the, on the tip of the tongue like Ford or Vauxhall or Peugeot. We have to, if we're to be successful in the UK, and get a, maybe a bigger share of voice and more attention than our market share would necessarily deserve, we've got to do things differently. And of course, it's not just test drive cars that come to your front door as well. Once the paperwork has been completed, your chosen vehicle, gleaming anew, arrives at your doorstep without you having to put one foot inside a showroom. New to the sports car market is this Noble M10 from Lee Noble, who designed the 200 mile an hour Ascari supercar. The M10 is a two-seat sports model powered by Ford's 1.8 ZTEC engine. 
Just like Caterham, Noble Motorsport aimed to sell the car with the option of self-build or factory assembled. The fully built 1.8-litre version is selling for around £19,000. Watch to space will be the first to drive this rather attractive roadster. Vauxhall are giving an early Christmas bonus for potential Corsa owners, chopping almost £500 off the price of their small hatch. A Vauxhall spokesman says that Corsa sales are stronger than ever, so we thought why not give our customers an early present. The London Motor Show has been hailed as a great success. Land Rover attracted 47,000 serious inquiries for their new Freelander. Alfa Romeo, 10,000, 7,000 inquiries for the 156 alone. And Aston Martin took 35 incremental orders worth £4 million. This just goes to show how the British shows are an excellent stage for manufacturers to launch new models. Well, you're probably aware that uh, there are some amazing world debuts here at uh, the show this week. At the London Motor Show, we've got some of the finest cars in the world from companies like Porsche, Ferrari, TVR and all that stuff. And yet, we've come here. We've come to this little stand selling this thing called the multi-socket. £20, it's revolutionary, it's made in the USA. Now, why are we ignoring all those cars and coming to this little stand? The answer is, he's my cousin. When we were kids, I used to beat him up. And look at him now. <laughs> this is my cousin, not my cousin Vinny, my cousin Johnny. Tell us all about it, John. What does it do? Hi. Well, you've got you one are, socket. You are my cousin, aren't you? I, yes, yes. Sometimes he is my cousin, anyway. No, one, one socket, 32 pins, tungsten tipped. Can you see the end there? Okay. The one socket will do all sizes from 3.8 to 11.16, from 9mm to 17mm. Just to give you some idea, just place it on top and away you go. It'll locate onto any of them. Doesn't matter what size within those parameters. That represents about 85% of nuts and bolts that we generally use. All you need to do on a stud is to put one flat side on it, it'll go on there, it'll take it out. There's an eyelet, it'll work on there. And so on and so on. Four-sided, it'll go on there as well. One will do the lot. Just to show you one other thing, there's a coach bolt, a slight flat edge on there, it'll take it out. As you can see, It'll work on Torx nuts, Allen bolts, the lot. But the main thing, it seems to me, that is that this replaces your 48-piece socket set, which costs you 50, 60 quid or whatever. Well, lots of people have hundreds of pounds worth of tools, but don't want to leave them in the back of their car because they may get stolen. If you put that in your car, it's 20 pounds. It'll do 85% of the nuts and bolts, as I said. If someone stole it, it wouldn't be the end of the world, would it? Yeah, and if you fancy getting in a bit of road rage with this bloke, remember he's got one of these in his car. <laughs> Well, it's hardly the most glamorous car at the show, but for us at Watt Car, it's one of the most important. This is the actual Volvo that was um, included in the NCAP Euro crash tests. Uh, as you can see, it's a bit of a mess, but it came out with the top rating out of all the cars tested, a four-star rating, uh, which is pretty good for this class of car. There were two tests, um, both against deformable structures to replicate being crashed into a car of a similar size. So what you're looking at here is this front corner was crashed into a deformable barrier, uh, and I think it was around 45 miles per hour. Um, and the dummies that were inside the car, the, the damage that was actually done to them, they replicate human bodies, was actually measured. Uh, each car had exactly the same test, uh, and the results of the, the damage to the dummies was compared. Uh, Volvo came out top. You really have to read further into this than what you're actually seeing. What you're seeing is a bit of a mess of a car. Uh, it doesn't look as though somebody's going to come out of there in pretty good form. Um, but reading behind it, you'll, you'll see that the Volvo is uh, the car that protects you most in this sort of accident in this class. It came out better than the likes of the Mondeo, Primera, um, Audi A3, BMW 3 Series um, and the old Mercedes C-Class that was also tested. Um, so yep, looks a mess, but if you were sitting behind the wheel, you're more likely to come out uh, in, in better shape than you were in one of the other cars. Finally, here's a model that will eventually get here next year. Mercedes-Benz's 4x4, the M-Class, is made in Alabama, USA. So let's enjoy the new M-Class in its all-American surroundings.